All right, hello and welcome back. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers. This is part four of the Linux privilege escalation room inside of the uh, CompTIA Pentest Plus pathway for Try Hack Me. As you can see right here, this is the pathway, and then we are almost at the end of the pathway. So all of these things we've already done, and we've recorded videos for them, and all of that you can find inside of this channel by doing a simple search for whatever you're looking for and today is just going to be this video is going to cover this very very last task inside of this particular linux privilege escalation room and uh, the one thing that i will say is that everything that we're going to do in this room we covered in all of these previous tasks and if you haven't gone through these previous tasks you kind of have to because I'm going to kind of just like speed through this just to try to find the answers. So if you're, you know, if you haven't gone through these, you're really not going to know what the heck I just did or what I'm doing. And it's, it's a foundation that you need to go through all of this. And we're using all of the skills that we learned basically through these tasks to answer this very last series of flags. So it's kind of a necessity. You kind of have to do that. Um, apart from that, this is a free room. That is available through try hack me so you could actually launch all of the machines in here for free you can use the attack box for free so it's really really cool and uh, i'm really excited to wrap it up i'm excited to finish this and hopefully you'll actually get some nice info and some value from it all right before we jump into the task i have a simple and humble request from you if you've learned anything from me or if you learn anything from this video if you like anything that you've gotten from this channel i kindly and humbly request that you would like subscribe and turn on the notification bell and maybe even drop a comment in the comment section below because it does help with the YouTube algorithm and it helps the channel grow and gain more reach and we can expand and grow the community so uh, I, I don't ask for anything apart from that I'm not selling anything to you all this stuff is available for free so it would just mean the world to me if you could do that and if you don't it's it's all good still enjoy the video and still enjoy the content and hopefully you get something out of it so uh, that being said and that being put out of the way i am gonna jump into this challenge here all right for this challenge we have to start this uh little victim attack box or excuse me the victim machine and then the attack box and the attack box is like a blue button at the top right here it takes a few minutes for it to start up so i did that in advance and what you're seeing on the right side of the screen is the actual attack box and then this little thing right here is the victim machine which is uh, I mean, it's pretty boring, and all you can do is enter command line uh, commands into it. Uh, the one thing that I don't like doing uh, is, and we typically do have to go back and forth between the attack box anyways. So what I like to do is I just like to secure shell into this machine from the attack box, and then we can just do all of our work from the attack box. But you do have to run the machine. You have to start the machine so that you can secure shell into it, and you can go and do the rest of the stuff. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a full screen view so that we can actually get some nice views out of it. And then we're going to secure shell into this machine as Leonard. And I just need to copy his IP address real quick. And so the secure shell command is actually pretty simple. You just do SSH Leonard at the IP address. And there it is. And you press enter. It's going to ask if you want to do that and then you say yes and his password is penny one two three and there we go just like that we are inside leonard's machine and we are in the home leonard directory so let's go back one and let's see what's inside this so leonard missy and root flag so we are currently leonard and if we actually go back into his uh file we see that there's a pearl file uh pearl five uh, directory and what's in here nothing's in there so it means nothing <laughs> and we can just go back and I'm gonna clear the screen just to make it easy so now we're inside the home directory we have Leonard Missy and root flag uh, I'm guessing we have to first get Missy's login so we can get that first flag from her and then of course we're gonna go and get the root flag so if I try to go into Missy I have no permission if I try to go to root flag I have no permission which means that we gotta gain some kind of privilege with that. So the first thing that we gotta do is we gotta find something that has the SUID uh, permission set on it so that that way 
when we run that binary or when we run that file, we actually get the permissions of the, the user. And the way that we can do that is pretty simple. It's like an easy command. It's just kind of a long command. So I'm going to type it in here and then you, we're going to kind of break it down just so you can see what we did. All right, so here's our command. So we're looking for something. So we use find and we want to use the root directory. That's why it's just a forward slash and then the type of file. So the type that we're looking for is F for file. If we were looking for a directory, it would be D and then the perm is for permission and 04000 means that that's the code basically for the SUID permission. And then we're going to list and then this last bit, which is super useful, is going to show uh, it's not going to show any of the error messages it's just going to show what we actually can have access to and then so here it is these are all the things that we actually have access to so i'm going to kind of open this up a little bit just so we can view it easier and if we scroll to the top so right there this is actually because we did this in an earlier exercise so i know that there's something available for this so this is a binary that we can run and we can run it as a super user or the if we can run it with the SUID permission, which is what that S stands for right there. So now the next thing that we have to do is we need to find something relevant to this that actually allows us to kind of hack or at least read something. And specifically, the file that we're trying to read is the ETC shadow file. And that file contains all of the passwords for all of the different users, including the root uh, root user and or it contains all of the hashes. I'll say that it doesn't contain all their passwords. It contains all the hashes. And so as you can see, as I'm trying to read it, it says I don't have any permission. So I have to find a way around this. But what's neat is if you already know what you can run as an SUID permission or super user, which we establish is the base 24. So we can go to uh, oh, we we need to use this in a little bit. This is another video that I did on John the Ripper, which is a password cracker. We're going to be using this in a little bit, uh, but this is the place. So this place is called GTFO bins. Uh, I like calling it get the fuck out bins. Excuse my French. Um, and so when you go to GTFO bins, this is basically the screen that you see, except it shows you everything. And so you want to search for the thing that you're looking for. So if, all, if, I, if I only do base, it shows you all the things. And of course, base 64 is listed in it. And if I click on that, it says you can do a file read, you can do an SUID execution, and then you can even do a pseudo execution. It's kind of hard to read because I think the screen is cutting off right there. But we can do these three things with base 64 as a little exploit. So the one thing that I'm really interested in is the SUID part because I want to be able to run something as a super user or a set UID permission, whatever. Um, the first part of it is to install it, but it's already installed on the machine, so we don't have to worry about that. The second part is the actual part that we're most interested in. And so L file equals file to read is that we're assigning the file that we want to read to this variable, and then we're going to go through base64 the variable itself and then base 64 decode very very simple command but it actually ends up working in our favor and hopefully it'll let us read the etc shadow file so we're going to go back here go right here zoom in a little bit so you could see and i'm going to do l file equals etc shadow and then i'm going to do base 64 and the variable that we just created and for shell every variable needs to have a dollar sign in front of it if you want to refer to it and there's that and we need to a, a vertical pipe and then we're just going to do base 64 and then decode and there it is there is all of the hashes for everybody so the one person look at that we have missy's hash right here super useful everything from so right here i'm going to zoom out a little bit more just so you can see uh, everything from the first colon all the way to the very next colon that's their hash and that includes that very last character which is the forward slash and then after that colon it's i think the group that they're in so on and so forth so this is all code just for words so you only see code for words um so we have the hash for missy and we also have the hash for the root user right here 
So I am going to first obviously try Missy because we need to get the flag from Missy's desktop. But I want to also just try the hash for the root user. Maybe we can kind of skip and and get access to the root user without having to use Missy to do it, whatever. But uh, so the first part of this is we need to just copy this little piece. I like also copying the actual username because it helps John the Ripper assign who you know the username the password belongs to especially if you're doing multiple hashes so uh, first we need to copy this I don't know if I did it I think I did whatever and then we're gonna create a new terminal and inside the new terminal I'm just gonna create a new hash file and I'm gonna call it hash 3 because I already have a couple on here and then inside hash 3 I'm gonna paste that information and then you do control O right yes and then control X and that's it so control O enter and then control X to get out and now we have hash three right there and actually you know what I restarted this machine so I don't even have all the other hash files so that's fine uh, either way it doesn't matter so now what we want to do is we want to use our friend John the Ripper and the command for that is super super simple so John has a format that you can use a word list as your dictionary for the attack and inside the attack boxes of uh, try hack me there is a share folder and inside that there's a word list folder and inside that there's a bunch of different word lists that we can use the one that we're going to use is called rock you uh, it's pretty famous and it's very useful and so you just do word list equals whatever the path of the word list is and then you do the name of the file that you're trying to crack and which is hash3.txt and you just press enter and then he gets to work and then in just a couple of seconds we should actually get the answer that we're looking for and there it is there we go ladies and gentlemen the password for missy is look at this easy ass password okay so missy's password is password one with a capital P so now inside of this machine again I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit more inside of this machine we are now going to switch user to Missy so you do that su Missy it's gonna ask for the password and password one you don't get to see what you're typing but as long as you typed it correctly now we actually are inside Missy's folder so if we do an ls we're here so if i go into her folder i can actually go and if i do another ls i see all her stuff so let's go to the desktop typically oh there it's nothing in here it's not even in here so ls la do i see anything there's nothing in here so what i need to do is i need to find her flag and i need to know what number her flag is it's flag one dot txt so what i need to do is search for flag one dot txt and the way we do that is find name flag one dot txt and of course to dev null and let's see what we can find here oh okay it's inside the documents it's not inside the desktop it's usually inside the desktop that's why i kind of skipped to that so now all I, I i can you know change directory cd into that document or i could just do cat and then do the actual location of it which is documents flag one.txt and there it is that is missy's flag so it ends in 544 so if we go here we can see that we got her flag ending in 544 so the next one is the root user and so i'm gonna try to see if uh and i'll i'll first we can see if we can find it so let's see if we can find where it is right so name flag 2.txt to dev null let's see if we can actually see where it is and we can't even see where it is right so it's going to give us an error message so if i do this maybe it'll at least say you don't have permission so if i run it look all of these things show up and i can't even see it because there's so many different freaking options so okay forget that so we're just going to clear the screen real quick but what i am interested in is trying to see if we can uh, maybe she also has access to base 64 so i'm gonna do the l file command one more time just to see if we can read the shadow file with missy hopefully she also has permissions to do that so base 64 and the l file variable and then we want to do base 64 decode sorry about the honking in the background okay cool 
it does work here too so there is that so now we are going to see if we can copy this root and see if we can kind of open this up inside John the Ripper so same process I'm just gonna paste it inside a text file in my attack box and now I have hash 2.txt and I'm just gonna run the same exact command with John the Ripper and except I'm just gonna change it from hash 3 to hash 2 and let's see if that actually works for us okay so this is taking a little bit of time so while that's running in the background I'm gonna try a second strategy to try to find what we can do so there is something called sudo l which basically gives you all of the permissions or all of the all of the commands that the current user can run with sudo so if I do that it'll give me a list and the only thing that seems to be available here is this thing right here so find so it doesn't require a password and we can run it as the current user so what we're gonna do is same thing is we're just gonna go here into GTFO bins and we're gonna look for find and find has a few options including a shell uh, and then it also gives us the pseudo permission and unfortunately I can't show you what it looks like it's actually this command right here it's this exact command just with the word pseudo in front of it oh there we go I, I just had to zoom in so same exact command that was at the top except just with the word pseudo so if I just run this as my current shell I should be able to get a root shell and we can probably even do it before John the Ripper finishes because he's still running in the background. So if we just go here inside of Missy's shell and paste that command right there, sudo find exec execute whatever. Look at that. So we have that. Previously we were Missy. So if I do who am I? I am now the root. Ha! How easy was that? Okay, so now we want to just do the same thing. Find something by the name of flag 2.txt and do 2 dev null please and there it is it's in the root flag home right on the directory so all we got to do is do home root flag forward slash flag 2.txt and there is the flag ends in 0238 and homeboy is still running in the background which probably means that the password for this person is not an easy password. The root password is probably not an easy password. So uh, all we got to do now is we got to go here and paste it in here, which is the flag. So just like that, we finished the capstone challenge. And that was actually pretty quick. I think I marked it under less than 30 minutes, maybe. It might even be less than 20 minutes, um, but pretty quick. And the main reason for that is because we went through all of this stuff first. <laughs> So what you saw is first we did the SUID and so SUID was under this section and then it tells you right here it's like hey a good practice is to go to you know to the list on GTFO bins and try to compare whatever you find on here with on here to see if it exists and so one of the things that immediately popped up was the base 64 thing because I, I found it for this particular exercise and I'm like oh I know base 64 exists already so I use base64 to get the S the SUID permission and then from there we got into uh, the Missy and uh, not uh, Missy we got Missy's hash right so we use the base64 decode to decode the ETC password file and then use Missy's hash and what's really important is that in the enumeration step when we went over here it showed us hey there's a really really important file and it's called etc shadow and the etc shadow file includes all of the passwords so where is it uh, I think we already went all the way through so maybe they didn't list it right here but it's something that I know I'm fully aware of they do talk about something called etc password which shows you all of the users but it doesn't show the hashes for those users so what's really important is you first at the very least find the list of the users 
and this is called enumeration so you can enumerate for the list of the users and then find the etc shadow file later but we kind of skipped all that because we knew who the user was and we just needed to get access to their password hash which is inside the etc shadow file so all of that was learned inside the enumeration task right and then of course we just did the sudo which was the very last thing that we did to see what is available and the command was what sudo l to see what they can actually run as sudo and we found something called find and then we went back to gtfo bins and then from there we here we go they talk about etc shadow right here so from there we were able to run the base 64 or not even base 64 decode we did just a basic sudo find command and it gave us a root shell right there on the spot and then from there we found the very last flag that belonged to root on the root flag uh, folder so just like that we wrapped this exercise and this was fun this was a really fun room i had done it previously but the first time that i went through it believe it or not <laughs> it took forever for me to do all these things so it was kind of like a really steep learning curve but this time around it was more of a refresher and it was actually really exciting to do because uh, i think it's very important to do the same room or the same series of challenges more than once so that it, it sinks in and it goes into your cells of your body and it becomes almost second nature for you to do these things so it's very very important to do stuff like that and this was it for me so hopefully you actually learned something from this series that we did this would be episode four from the linux privilege escalation series not to be confused with the original uh, series that i did and so i'll go show you real quick while we're here and we're kind of ahead of time so this was the video for john the ripper and i i mean i already showed you the command to to run it but that was if you wanted to learn everything that john can do because you could do a lot of stuff with john the ripper so if you just go into the channel and then from here you just go into that little search box and then you do linux it'll show you all of the linux stuff that we've done and there's of course a playlist dedicated to linux but these two right here these little interesting little babies these are the first two linux videos that i did and then there is part one part two part three has not been uploaded yet because that's going to be edited i finished that earlier today and then the one that you're watching right now is going to be part four so we got uh the linux specific playlist that has 14 videos in it or 16 now and then after the end of this is going to be 18 so there's eight uh, 16 videos inside the linux uh playlist and so on and so forth so anyways i'm just kind of promoting the channel at this point but yeah, this is it. That was it. Super, super easy to do. Uh, very exciting to do. So I hope you learned a lot from it. And uh, yeah, just as a quick reminder, if you did actually learn a lot from me or from the channel or any of the other videos, if you like this content, so on and so forth, please, please humbly, I kindly request that you like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and maybe even drop a comment just to help us with the algorithm and of course there's the other super benefit that comes from that where you can actually get notified from me from whenever there's another video that comes out so if any of this stuff is what you're trying to learn and you're trying to get more advanced at i drop videos once a day at least sometimes two or three times a day and so if you want to get notified for those new videos that come out i highly recommend that you subscribe and you turn on the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out but if you just want to kind of do a kindness, the only thing that I ask from you is to do those things and drop a comment so that it helps us with the algorithm. We get more reach. We build a bigger community, yada, yada, yada. You already know the, the spiel. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot from it. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite system and network attacker. And if no one else loves you, Hank loves you. Peace, love, and chicken grease. I will see you in the next video. Later.